pines can be something of a challenge to grow in Oklahoma, especially in the western part of the state. And there's a number of diseases and insects that commonly affect pines. And today we're going to look at a couple of those, starting with the diseases. And joining me first is Damon Smith, Assistant Professor and Statewide Extension Specialist in Diseases of Turf and Horticultural Crops. Damon, thanks for joining us today. No problem. Glad to be here. Well, could you start by telling us a little bit of the common diseases that we find here in pines? Sure. Uh, we primarily have two um, uh, foliar problems we typically mm -hmm. run into in pines. As you mentioned, uh, you know, our pine trees, especially the exotic pines, a lot of times are under some, some sort of stress uh, due to environment. Uh, with that comes in uh, these two foliar problems. Uh, first, we see uh, quite a bit in Oklahoma is Tiplodia tip blight, mm -hmm. okay, primarily a problem at the tips, hence its name, uh, Diplodia tip light. Diplodia is the name of the fungus. Uh, we see in the first year needles, uh, usually uh, shortened, and, and they'll typically be blighted. In more advanced stages, we can actually take the needles off the, mm -hmm. the tip, pull back the sheath, mm -hmm. and sometimes we'll see uh, fruiting bodies of the, the fungus in there. Uh, if, if, that's, if you don't see the fruiting bodies there, you can then look for pine cones underneath the tree. Okay. And lots of times we see those uh, fruiting structures of the fungus, and you can see them here on these uh, two examples where we have small pepper-like uh, structures. These little black dots yep. all around. And okay. they're very diagnostic for the, um, for the uh, fungus. Okay. okay. So typically in the summertime, we see infections on the new needles uh, early on in the season. Second year needles, sometimes we'll see infections usually any time from May uh, till about this time of year we can see those infections. Okay. Um, the second problem that we'll see uh, in Oklahoma is a Dothostroma needle blight. Mm -hmm. Little different symptomology here. Uh, we'll see this banding that begins on the needles. Okay. okay. Sometimes it manifests as a little spot and then expand into a band and those bands will eventually uh, continue across the entire needle and, mm -hmm. and will eventually get some defoliation depending on how severe the infection is and how fast it spreads. Okay, so both diseases are quite stressful on the trees and in more advanced uh, stages can actually kill a tree uh, eventually at the end uh, of, of the disease cycle. But it could take some time uh, for defoliation. So do we want to aim our management more on preventing diseases? Yes, uh, mainly uh, in the horticulture landscape environment, I like prevention. I think that's the best medicine. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, with our pines, uh, lots of folks uh, like to plant pines as windbreaks in Oklahoma. And one thing that we see when that happens is they'll plant them too close together. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that when you plant pines that close, uh, you have a lot of uh, higher humidity mm -hmm. in the canopy due to lack of airflow and that's very conducive for these fungal problems. So one thing we recommend folks doing is planting with space uh, in their pine plantings or planting on thinning and removing uh, trees selectively in order to keep the canopy open. If you can reduce the relative humidity within the canopy environment, that will help reduce a lot of these fungal foliar problems on our pine trees. There are also some uh, fungicides out there available to homeowners, but uh, you know, issues with spraying large trees yeah. and, and pesticides exposures and those sorts of things they're definitely a, an issue so we really strive for preventative programs okay thank you